I might hit the thing. All right. Welcome to Redacted, episode three. Right? Uh, yes, three. We're so professional. <laughs> <laughs> This is SCP-004, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. When handling items SCP-004-2 through SCP-13, proper, proper procedure is vital. The items are not permitted to be moved off-site unless accompanied by two Level 4 security personnel. Under no circumstances should any other component of SCP-004 be taken through SCP-004-1. The effects of doing so are yet unknown. The current cost of experimentation makes further research impractical. Should any of the objects contained within SCP-004-1 breach containment or the facility be breached, keys must be brought inside the door closed prior to activation of Site-62's on-site warhead. Unauthorized removal of keys from testing area is grounds for immediate termination. Level 1 clearance is required for basic ass... <laughs> Basic access to SCP-004-1. Level 4 clearance is required for use of SCP-004-2 to 13. Description. SCP-004 consists of a old wooden barn door, dash 1, and a set of 12 rusted steel keys referred to as dash 2 through dash 13. The door itself is an entrance to an abandoned factory in Data Expunged. Chronological History July 2nd, 1949 A group of three juveniles trespassing on federal property near Redacted find the door. According to their testimony, they found a set of rusted, rusted keys in an iron lockbox and determined what door the keys unlock. The juveniles are taken into custody after they contact Sheriff Redacted when one of their friends... SCP-004 CAS-01 goes missing. Ju July 3rd. Oh. No, continue. July 3rd, 1949. Local authorities find the severed right hand of SCP-004 CAS-01 8 kilometers from SCP-004-1. Other parts of SCP-004 cases to one body are found scattered as far as 32 kilometers from the factory. Under interrogation, apprehended juveniles tell authorities that upon opening the door what, with one of the keys, SCP-004 Case 1, was torn into several pieces, each of which disappeared. At this point, the SCP Foundation takes over the investigation. July 4th, 1949. SCP Agent Redacted obtains the keys from the local authorities to begin testing. Tests show that SCP-004-2 through dash 13 all fit into a single lock on the large barred door. 12 class D personnel are assigned to test the effects of the door. Of the 12 test subjects, each trying a different key to enter the room, only two survive. Opening the door with any key except dash 7 or dash 12 caused the test subjects to be torn apart in multiple directions. However, no dismembered parts were found until later. At the time of writing, only two parts of each subject have been recovered, with the exception of the subject using SCP-004-1, redacted, whose pieces were scattered in close proximity. The others have, for all intents and purposes, vanished from existence. Of the two surviving subjects, only one, having used SCP-7, returned unharmed. The other came back in a near catatonic state, only able to remove himself from the room and then collapse on the floor, and then had to be restrained to prevent him from gouging out his eyes. See Appendix A, Mental Health Effects of 004. The subject using SCP-004-7 said that he had entered a large room, impossibly big for the size of the attached building. After his exit, scp Dash zero zero four dash one was propped open and an armed squad of level three personnel entered. The size of the room is impossible to measure, and the door frame and the individuals in the room are the only 
part of the room that can be felt or illuminated. July 16th, 1949, the juvenile suspects and sheriff redacted are terminated. August 2nd, 1949, redacted is declared a hazardous area due to unexploded ordnance and fences erected in order to prevent, to prevent civilian ingress. Tests to determine safety of exposure to environment behind SCP-004-1 begin. December 1st, 1950, space-time anomalies resulting from exposure to SCP-004 are confirmed. Testing is suspended until further notice. July 2nd, 19 redacted. The unaccounted for remains of SCP-004-CAS-01 appear unexpectedly outside SCP-004-1. Despite being killed decades before, the remains of CAS-01 are not decomposed in any matter and are still warm to the touch. Blood remains uncoagulated. The remains are remanded for testing. July 4th, 19 redacted. The unaccounted for remains of one of the 12 original test subjects, subjects appear in similar manner to those of SCP-004 CAS-01. The remains have been designated SCP-004 CAS-02. Records suggest that both SCP-004 CAS-1 and CAS-2 used SCP-004 redacted. March 21st, 1999. With the massive proliferation of nuclear weapons and World War III only redacted years away, construction has begun on a site inside of SCP-004-1. The site is to stock supplies for redacted person days. April 21st, 1999. Redacted has ordered the site inside SCP-004-1 to be expanded to include emergency storage for mobile SCP redacted specimens and redacted petabyte database for storage of all SCP data. The facility is now referred to as Site-62. September 25th, 2000. Site-62 is operational. Labs and containment units are complete and can contain most of... and can, and can contain the most dangerous specimens. Backup of the SCP database has begun. January 25th, 2001. Due to time anomalies, see space time anomalies below, all personnel working on Site 62 are now required to reside on site permanently. Families of personnel are to be informed that loved ones perished in, in industrial accidents. Cloned bodies have been prepared for the funeral. August 14th, 2003. Massive power outage across the Northeast United States and through Canada. Due to the initial failure of multiple SCP generators, Site-62 was without power for 53 minutes. During those 53 minutes, those on site were completely without any source of light. They reported sensing creatures and people, although no, no abnormal entities could be seen or felt. Selected facility personnel were allowed to read Redacted, Appendix A, and said the creatures sensed were a humanoid size, but otherwise similar to the massive green creature described. Space-time anomalies. SCP-004 seems to propagate spatiotemporarily. Anomalies. Personal leaving the personnel leaving the facility report losing time. Those who have been on the site for weeks insist that they have only been in the facility for several days. And records of work completed and supplies consumed support their their, their claims. Other temporal anomalies involve SCP-004-2 through 13, especially the reappearance of 004-CAS-1 and 004-CAS-2. Exactly redacted years after using SCP-004 redacted, redacted has been assigned to investigate all aspects of these time anomalies. Spatial anomalies include the impossibly large dimensions of the area opened by SCP-004-7, similarly to the 2003 blackout incident suggests that there exists an alternate plan of existence within the same space of Site-62 occupied. Additional notes. Testing on SCP-004 reveals that 10 of the keys that open Dash 1 on a dimension where the laws of physics and topology are significantly different than those of our home dimension. Test subjects meeting these hostile conditions are torn apart. 
their body parts deposited in various locations, only three of which have been verified to be on Earth. Material deposited at two of these points appears immediately. The material deposited at the third appears exactly redacted years into the future. The other seven locations are currently unknown. Current testing focuses on two avenues of research. The first is finding ways to survive SCP-004's hostile topologies. The second, redacted, suggests that Dash 2 through Dash 13 may open doors other than SCP-004-1. Appendix A, Mental Health Effects of SCP-004-12. All Class B personnel using SCP-004-12 return in a catatonic state, unable to speak. Some may even have enough energy left to try and cloud out their eyes. Of the 16 subjects, only four have survived. Only one has regained speech following long-term psychotherapy. He was able to tell the psychiatrist, psychiatrist that he saw a massive green creature, so large that much of its body extended beyond the field of view. He reported innate fear and sudden recognition, as if it were something buried deep in his primal fears, and forced implantation of incomprehensible memories. Subjects display acute anterograde and retrograde amnesia. Appendix B, additional information. Item SCP-004-14, date of discovery, September 2nd, 1950. Origin of object. Object was discovered elsewhere in the factory area in the previously undiscovered manager's office. You good, fam? Oh, uh, no, I thought that was... Uh, oh, go for it. You were gonna... Sorry about that. No, you're wrong. Um, uh, description. Object appears as a large, unvarnished wooden box. The box may be unlocked by the safe key, SCP-004-7, as well as five of the unsafe keys. See document SCP-004-1. Upon unlocking of the SCP-004-14 with SCP-7, the box opens automatically on hinges. The volume of the space inside is precisely five times greater than the outer dimensions imply. Items placed within while the lid remains open do not affect the weight or any other properties of the box. When the lid is closed and locked, however, all items inside vanish irretrievably. Personnel locked inside the box are also irretrievable, although losing personnel in this fashion appears to affect significantly the dreams experienced by Redacted. Thank you for watching, listening, enjoying this episode of Redacted. Further episodes of Redacted are reserved for those who smash that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell. Ding. Dong. Ding. <laughs>